Hello and welcome to the Mobile Youth Show. I'm your host, Freddie Benjamin, and today we're going to talk about some ethnographic insights into how young people use mobile payments. And what does ethnography tell us about mobile payments? Now, the mobile payment industry will amount to a trillion dollars in 2020. But what exactly is mobile payments? When people in the industry, and that involves operators, handsets, banks, credit card companies, retailers, and app developers. And when they talk about mobile payments, they, they talk about four different areas. The first one is mobile banking. And this is where one's bank account is linked to the mobile via an app, and allowing them to check their balance, pay bills, and make transfers. Then the next part is mobile commerce. This involves accessing Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or any other online store including the app stores via the mobile to make an online purchase. The third is mobile wallet. This is where new players like PayPal and Square come in, allowing users to top up their mobile wallets, which can then be used on online stores or to make transfers. And finally, the fourth one is retail purchase. And this is the more exciting and futuristic area where shoppers flash their NFC-enabled handsets to make payments at a retail outlet. Or at least that's what the industry believes it is. Now, from the customer's point of view, the first three, the mobile banking, mobile commerce, and mobile wallet, they aren't really anything new. They are really a mobile variant of the already existing PC behavior. In other words, online banking shifts to mobile banking, e-commerce shifts to m-commerce, and online wallets shift to mobile wallet. The tool is different since it's moved from the PC to mobile, but the value derived by the consumer is still the same. The much discussed and debated area is the fourth one, using mobile to pay for retail purchases. Now you might have heard many industry pundits talk about NFC technology and how it's going to change the future of mobile payments. NFC is quite impressive, but how do young people feel about it? Well, to cut a long story short, youth are more likely to donate via SMS than pay for a purchase using NFC. So why is it? And what we discovered in our recent research was that the biggest issue young people have with NFC is that of trust and security. Youth just don't trust the new technology enough, and their biggest fear is, you know, what if it rejects my mobile and I end up looking stupid in front of others? However, young people are very comfortable linking their mobile apps to their bank accounts or credit cards or debit cards to use it for payments. So we asked young people, who do they trust the most to provide a reliable, trustworthy mobile payment service? Not very surprisingly, internet companies like PayPal were ranked number one, followed by credit card companies like MasterCard and American Express. And surprisingly, retailers were ranked well ahead of banks and mobile brands. But then again, if you look at the success of Starbucks you know, with their mobile payment service, it is not really that surprising after all. If you are a retailer, you'd trust that your mobile payment works fine when doing transactions with you. And it does not need to be NFC. An app would be just fine because young people are already familiar with how an app works. So far, NFC is just another payment option alongside cash and card. Given the option, young people will choose cash or card over mobile any day. Some people complain about how inconvenient it is to carry cash or exact change. Well, that problem was solved by cards years ago. So what pain point does NFC solve? The answer is it doesn't solve any pain point as of now. We would be better off using mobile apps linked to bank accounts or credit cards or debit cards to push forward the mobile payment industry rather than hope that the next iPhone will carry the NFC technology. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening. Join us again next week for more insights into mobile and youth cultures. Or visit us at www.mobileyouth.org.